Okay. My name is Gary Swanson. G-A-R-Y-S-W-A-N-S-O-N. Yeah, Lone Tree Farm, Lone Tree Iowa farmer. Uh, Lone Tree Iowa, and this is my family farm or whatever. My dad bought it, and and uh, I've been farming it longer than what he did. And and uh, anyway, it's just a family farm. You farm with uh, any family? Um, we grow probably two thirds corn and a third beans and uh, hay, and uh, that's about it for the crops. And we have some, and for the technology part. Let, leave that up to him. Like this drill behind me, it doesn't have markers on it and stuff. And so he uh, was the first one to get it set up to go through there and plant because we didn't have markers. But I have, I have uh, I'm still old school. I have markers on my planner <laughs> that I run. So tell me a little bit about um, your nutrient management planning and how you uh, kind of focus on making sure you're getting the most out of your nutrients. Oh, we grid sample. Uh, I do grids about every three years. And so we just kind of go off of that and Mark Tennis and they sit down and kind of discuss what we're gonna put on for our corn acres and bean acres um, and go off of that. It's just pretty much going off the grid sampling. Tell me a little bit about um, any concerns you might have about phosphorus. Are you worried about kind of making sure you get that? Well, it's, it's phosphorus gets tied up in the soil and you, that's one reason I sought it out to, to, to wanted to use a veil was that uh, I wanted to plant to, you know, be able to uptake it. And uh, my home farm here was low. We would had pulled big yields off and we were low on phosphorus and stuff. And I'd read in a, I don't know if it was Farm Industries or what magazine it was, that uh, a veil was coming out or whatever to go through there. And I'd talked to Mark about it and stuff and we've been using it ever since. And Is it been as much of a concern for you still, the phosphorus loss? Oh yeah, it's just, you just want to keep it uh, where the plants using it and not going down the river. I mean, there's so many people on the media and everything else hounding about our water qualities and stuff that uh, we, we want, us farmers got to do everything we can, you know. Tell me a little bit about the soil types you have on the farm. The Tama is what they, they, they go through there. The Tama soils is pretty much what we have, but it mixes with all the different ground I farm. But uh, this is gumbo ground down in here and it's real tight and it's, it's low and flat and, and ponding out and, and stuff like that. And that's why the tile is a real big concern down in here. We pattern tiled this home farm and uh, need to do more. But we'll see how the grain markets go. Tell me a little bit about some of the, because of those soil types, what sort of agronomic challenges you're dealing with? Say that again. What sort of agronomic challenges are you dealing with? Oh. Other than other than nutrient loss because of the soil types that you have? Just, just getting the, the most for your buck, you know, bang for your buck, you know, when you're putting the fertilizer down and that, you just don't have the money that you want to, you know, you never do. I mean, it doesn't matter if corn's $5 or $8 or whatever, you still want to get the most for your money. And so that's what, you know, you don't want to uh, put fertilizer on and not get any use out of it. You want the plant to use it. That's what we're putting it out there for. Tell me a little bit, um, you mentioned some some grid sampling that you're doing. Is there any other uh, tissues testing or? Um, I, I leave that up to Mark to, to go through there if they're doing the leaf sampling and stuff. We're doing uh, satellite imaging. Um, that's one thing that we did last year and we're doing again this year um, on some farms or one farm that I guess it's, a, it's two combined. But uh, anyway, we're, we're doing that and, that's, and then we spread the nitrogen off of the GPS maps and stuff. And it was pretty interesting last year. Uh, the guy running the fertilizer spreader said that it would come on a lot of times where he didn't think it should, but then other places it came on when, you know, it just, but, but anyway, when it was all said and done, uh, you could look over the field. We'd crawl up on a grain bin and look over the field and where the yellow spots and stuff like two weeks later, they were gone. And, uh, it really worked well. So. so what, other than Mark's recommendation, what helped you decide that you wanted to include a veil in your nutrient management? Well, just you know, magazine articles, I, I guess, is, uh, you know, reading about it, what it did, what it did and, and uh, wanting to use it because of that, you know. Could you talk a little bit about um, the return on your investment? Do you feel like you're getting one with a veil and how that's helping you get the most bang for your buck? Well, 
our yields have been tremendous and stuff. I mean, we checked some corn on corn last fall that we were running in the 270 bushel range. And uh, you don't do that without uh, having a good fertility program and stuff and it working. And um, I think that's one of the main factors is that we've had that and, and then the yield as far as going to grid samples, uh, you know, showing that we've had an increase in our uh, phosphorus build up, you know. So you're, you're talking about building up is more going into the plant and less kind of staying behind yeah. the soil. Yeah. Okay, so what type of yield increases are you seeing? Have you been able to track kind of what increase you're getting? Well, our yields keep going up. Um, really haven't compared it or whatever because we use it on everything. So it, it's just that, you know, we're, we're, uh, we keep getting our yields higher, so. That's pretty much the goal, right? <laughs> yep, yep, the almighty dollar. And so if you get the, as many bushels as you can to get it. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about impact is that important to you on this farm yeah yeah it's just that you don't want it to go down the tile line and down the river and and uh it's important uh whatever we do to make it environmental friendly was that um did you see that as a benefit when you were thinking about using a veil um back then no and uh but now it is i mean we've learned more about uh environmental uh, impacts and stuff, but when I first sought it out years ago, no, it was just to, for yield increase. So how many years, I guess, of applications have you had with a veil now? Oh, it's 10 years probably, you know. Yep, I think that it's a good product and everybody should be using it, you know. Great. How you doing on sound or anything? Oh yeah, good? good. Okay. So tell me about, maybe it's the same kind of question that I just asked you, the same concern. Yeah. Tell me specifically what your concerns are about nitrogen loss. Well, it's, it's just that, uh, especially on this ground that we farm here, uh, it, you know, we're flat and you get big rains and you get ponds and stuff and your nitrogen can get away from you. And the corn plant, it's just so important to have the nitrogen there. Uh, and you don't want it going down the tile line and you want it to be uh, for the plant there to use, and it's very important. So when you're thinking about your nutrient management planning, is nitrogen always your top concern? If so, tell me about why. Um, on corn, nitrogen's always probably number one because, I mean, like I always say, it's, a, it's, it's important as oxygen is to a person. Now, if you start taking 20 or 30, 40 percent of oxygen away from you, you don't do very well, and the corn plant's the same way. It has to have it, or it's not going to do well. Tell me a little bit about some of the testing, like you mentioned on the phosphorus side, but what are you doing to make sure your crops are getting that nitrogen they need? Um, well, I guess as far as that satellite imaging and that, it's showing uh, you know, the yellow spots and, and, and being able to precisely place the nitrogen where it needs to be. And that's one of the tools that we use now. Tell me about your nitrogen applications, what are you using and when are you applying it? Um, well, we put anhydrous on a lot of times in the fall with NSERV and then uh, we've backed that down. We used to just always put like 200 pounds of, of anhydrous on with NSERV and we were probably good unless we needed to add some more with urea, you know, with Nutrisphere or whatever and that. And now we've kind of backed down the, the nitrogen and uh, which last fall we didn't get any applied. We had to put it on the spring. And so we didn't put as much on as we usually do, but uh, we, we uh, put the anhydrous on this spring and then with our chemicals, we're putting on uh, nitrogen, 32% with the chemicals. And then we'll come back with urea uh, over the top. So we, we try to split it out now in several different applications instead of just one. So you said you were you were using Inser, but now you're using just Nutrisphere in. Or are you still using? We're still using. We we use a stabilizer in everything that we put on of nitrogen. Okay, tell me a little bit about where you're seeing the benefit of Nutrisphere in. Um, oh, like when when we've put it on with the urea and stuff on there, and that, you can just see with the yield monitor when you go through the areas that we covered uh, the yield response. I mean, it's 30, 40, 50 bushel an acre better uh, where we've put it. You know. And it's so 
a lot of times we don't do whole fields. We'll just do, uh, you know, certain parts that need it. And, uh, but when you run into the Mary's combine and you really see a, a yield increase. So tell me again, where, which applications you're using Nutrisphere in? Okay, we're using it on with the 32% at planning. And with, after planning with spraying the chemicals on then, we put the 32% with the chemicals, and then we're using it with the urea. When we're, we're using a box spreader, like on a John Deere, uh, and spread it over the top. When did you start using the product in your future management plan? Um, I don't remember how many years ago that was. About the same time maybe as Avail, or? No, no. It was not not as much. I'd I'd say five years ago, maybe on the, on on there, maybe on we maybe so did you it, get into using Nutrisphere because you had already tried a veil. Um, it not really, not really. Just it was a it was a good product on there. We're just using a stabilizer and everything we can. Uh, I don't know. So what's the how big a priority is it for you using those stabilizers? Has that been something you guys have tried year over year and you're just committed to doing it? Yes, that's just, we don't put anything down without a stabilizer. I mean, it's just, it's just that important. Tell me a little bit about um, your kind of commitment to Nutrisphere and do you recommend it to friends or neighbors? Do you feel like it's really helping you hold on to nitrogen? Yes, I think it, it, it's done a real, real good job for, uh, holding the nitrogen in place and I'd recommend that everybody try it because you know you're trying to get the most bushels out there and it's just a no-brainer to to use it. Tell me about um, your environmental concerns with nitrogen as well. Nitrogen can get away from you so fast that you just need a stabilizer to hold it in place and that's why it shouldn't be put on without a stabilizer. So when you're making some of your decisions about um, nitrogen stabilizers, what's the most important factor to you? Is it, is it price? Is it just an ROI? Is it your relationship with your rep? Um, I guess we don't even consider the price that much on it. I guess I, I, I look at the price of urea and anhydrous and 32 and that, but I don't really look at the price of the stabilizer. We're just going to use it, you know, it's just, um, I guess I don't check that very well. I should probably. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm trying to get an understanding of your, how important it is in your decision. Yeah, no, it's just, okay, it's just you're going to use it and that's it. Yeah. You because it's better to back down, uh, you know, if, if you're going to have to cut the nitrogen back a little bit, uh, you're better off to do that and leave the stabilizer in there because you don't want the loss. I mean, it's just that important. Or have you thought about, or are you guys considering changing any of your rates or your timing, given prices and everything? Um, no, we, we keep the nitrogen level up there pretty well. I mean, we've backed down like on the anhydrous and then put it on, uh, you know, with 32% uh, and the urea or whatever, and made it there so that the plant's taking it up at the right time. Um, if anything, that's probably been our adjustment. Could you tell me just a little bit more about why you feel this product is a good investment for you? Well, it's just that we get better yields out of it and we're not seeing the environmentally that it's going down the, the tile lines to the river and stuff. And that's the bottom line about this yields and safety. So tell me about your relationship with Vision Ag. Oh, um, I've been working with uh, Vision Ag for well, the names changed several different times, but I've been with them forever. I, I, it's been so many years that I can't remember how long. Mark Tennis is at Vision Ag is who I've dealt with for a long time. Like I said, they've had a name change or two, but Vision Ag has been uh, one that we've dealt with here lately. How important of a partner are they to you with your farming operation? Oh, very, I, very much. I, I, you know, look to them for... Uh, when they come out with a product or whatever and introduce it to me and that just like the Nutrisphere when they said that it was a good product to use in that and we, you know, we were went on board with it, you know, it was just um, a good product to go through there from their, their eyes and, and we used it and it, it worked. Could you tell me a little bit about uh, the recommendations they make, of, mostly about them kind of providing you with agronomic solutions that you 
you look to them to provide that kind of trusted advice? Well, they've got data that um, uh, that I'd, I'm not avail, you know, don't have, you know, right there for me to use, and I go, I go by their recommendations. I mean, they've got the tests that they see, and they know if it's going to make you money or not easily. And so, uh, Vision Ag's been real good about, you know, telling me what to use, and and I usually go by what they say, you know, and uh, they've been good to work with. Could you tell me a little bit about when? Uh, Mark or his team first introduced you to NutraSphere in? Uh, I don't know. Probably when we started uh, with the 32%, uh, putting it on at the chemical and that, uh, they introduced NutraSphere then. And then when they started using the box spreader, spreading urea over the top of this corn when it's like head high or whatever. Um, you know, and I don't remember how many years ago that's been, but it's been quite a while. That's okay. Tell me about kind of what Vision said to you when they said, you, hey, you should, you should try this stuff. What did, what did they do to sell you on it? Well, they just think that, you'll, that your yields will increase by having uh, that NutraSphere used. And um, so you pretty much just go by the recommendations.